The Jurassic franchise does not fail in showcasing villainous characters. But today, we aren't going to talk about humans. We are going to talk about dinosaurs. The bad dinosaurs. In this episode, we will evaluate the five big bad theropods featured in the Jurassic franchise, taking into account several villainous attributes that will grant one of these killers the title of ultimate villain. To see more content featuring your favorite dinosaurs, bloodthirsty monsters, and more carnage, hit that red subscribe button, like this video, and hold on tight as we rank the atrocities of the big five Jurassic World villains. The dinosaurs that will make up this list will be the five big theropods that were portrayed as villains in some of the Jurassic films. While it is true that there were other species of dinosaur that displayed malevolent behavior towards the main characters, we are going to omit these smaller creatures simply because they don't fit the description of the big bad that we are presenting in this episode. To be counted on this list, the creatures had to be portrayed or advertised as the bad dinos in their corresponding films. We are also omitting the Rexes in this series due to their protagonistic role in all of their appearances, and the fact that they were just acting like the predators they naturally are. Also, so keep in mind that the rankings that will be revealed at the end of the video will be based on several criteria that make them the worst villain, not based solely on combat ability. These attributes are design, relentlessness, shrewdness, cruelty, and their backstory. Let's begin with our first dinosaur, the Spinosaurus. This dinosaur appeared in Jurassic Park 3, giving us a ton of stuff to talk about. Let's begin with its design. Note that this attribute is important because it tells us how intimidating this villain looks and how well it functions as an animal. This Spinosaurus was obviously not the paleo-accurate one that we are now acquainted with. In this Spino's case, this turned out to be a good thing because this posture allows it to be a lot more dangerous than its real-life counterpart, especially when it comes to its height, being able to reach elevated objects, and a crucial height advantage against other predators. Not to mention that this Spino design is amongst the most favorites in the Jurassic fanbase. But what about its relentlessness? This word basically means how persistent you are on attaining your objectives, or in a villain's case, how persistent you are on inflicting evil. The Spino? Very much so. Once nicked by this plane's propeller, this guy immediately went from being a predator doing predator things to a vengeful monster who constantly followed this group of humans around the island seeking revenge. This takes us to its intelligence. How did this Spino know to follow these particular people? Well, remember how this guy finally found the plane that nicked it earlier? Inside of this strange flying apparatus were these things. People. Spino now understood that these organisms housed inside this craft were the intelligent beings responsible for this incident. This sort of cognition that allowed Spino to piece this together grants this creature a good rank in intelligence. This goes on as to being able to figure out a good strategy to defeat Rexes, determine the weakness of artificial barriers, etc. But how cruel was this thing? In this episode, we look at cruelty as how far out of your way will you go to inflict the highest level of pain and fear on a victim. The Spino is equipped with somewhat straighter teeth than a T-Rex, but built to be able to grip onto prey to allow its neck maneuvers to do its bidding. And these big claws on its hands? We've seen these claws in action on humans only twice, with a horrendous end to its victims. But nothing that makes us believe that Spino took its time to inflict elongated pain or suffering. It just ate them. We don't know much about the Spino's backstory other than it being illegally created in Isla Sorna and facing some mistreatment by humans, which makes this dinosaur's backstory a real mystery. But one thing that we do know is that this creature is known to be a T-Rex killer. That's right, it's mentioned that the Spino would actively look out for T-Rex P and then use this scent to locate and kill any unsuspecting T-Rex. Being a dinosaur that actively looks out to kill the icon of this franchise will most definitely place the Spino in a decent position in this ranking. But first, let's discuss a dinosaur that was literally engineered for chaos. Number 2. The Indominus Rex Up next, we will discuss the most unique big theropod in this entire franchise. Unique in that it was literally designed by a whole unit of engineers and scientists to be a dinosaur that inflicts fear and terror on tourists. Except it went on to inflict this on a much larger demographic. The Indominus Rex's white color, raptor-like build, and the fact that it was just massive made it a much more interesting dinosaur. This animal had a build that was unlike any other super theropod in existence. Consequently, the audience would get excited every time the Indominus would appear on camera. 
In terms of relentlessness, we need to pay attention to these dinosaurs' objectives, which was to escape and then proceeded to just kill. Remember that this dinosaur lived inside this enclosure for its entire life, and it knew there was stuff out there. As a result, this animal spent its last day on Earth roaming an island with a ton of new things it had never seen before, running into many types of creatures and determining that the best way to engage with them was to kill them. This speaks to two additional villainous attributes, intelligence and cruelty. Both can go hand in hand because in order to find some sort of pleasure in killing, you need to have the cognitive functions that enable such brutality. The Indominus was the perfect example. It killed for sport and was seen killing humans in pretty brutal fashions, yanking legs off its live victims, snapping them in two, manhandling a few of them, crushing them, etc. We could make an entire video on how smart this thing was, but something we should really point out is the fact that it was the only dinosaur in this franchise that could effectively communicate with and command raptors. That's right, this girl hired her own crew of henchmen that did her bidding, and in the process turned them against their own. So whatever the Indominus said to these raptors, it was enough to convince them to switch sides and hunt down the mercenaries, adding the word manipulative to the many words that describe this villain. This dinosaur didn't have a good upbringing. Upon birth, it's said that this Indominus killed her sibling and was kept in constrained conditions her whole life not allowed to leave her enclosure, artificially fed, which was against her instincts to hunt, and always invigilated to the point that she eventually learned what this tracker was, which she then removed after she escaped. Before we place the Indominus Rex on our ranking table, let's first discuss another earlier hybrid creation. Number 3. The Scorpius Rex the Scorpius Rex appeared in Season 2 of Camp Cretaceous and was portrayed as a creature whose raw instincts forged it into the villainous creature it became. Design-wise, <laughs> it's a cool creature, but then again, according to Dr. Wu himself, it was a bit displeasing to the eye, but unique nonetheless. This animal is equipped with long limbs, a spiked tail with venomous quills courtesy of genes from a scorpion fish, and an interesting shortened snout filled with aberrated rows of teeth. Again, like the previous hybrid, this dinosaur's unique design allows this to rank high in terms of visual villainous appearance, and some bonus points for being engineered to be capable of reproducing using parthenogenesis. But how relentless was this animal? This will have to be discussed with the matter of intelligence. While it is true that this creature showed problem-solving abilities, it also showed signs of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, meaning that whatever it was doing, external factors would make it switch its attention and pursue other objectives. Things such as hearing other dinosaurs at a distance and detecting burning objects were just a few things that distracted this Scorpius Rex from its task at hand these mental ailments hinder this creature at ranking high in these two categories. However, this does not mean that this animal was not cruel at all. Remember, in the event that this creature did reach its objective and finally gets to inflict the killing blow, this creature will use terrorizing, ambushing methods to kill prey and mercilessly kill entire herds of herbivores. Did it enjoy the killing? Well, we do see that at times the Scorpius Rex would slowly approach these kids and seem to get a kick out of seeing these peeps get cornered. This dino could have swiftly ended them right here, for instance, but instead took its time. So yes, we can say that this thing enjoyed this act, which gives it a boost in the villainous cruelty attributes. But what about its story? It's said that this animal was the very first hybrid created, and as a result of the early concepting, this animal would not be as polished genetically as the later hybrids. These imperfections would be laid bare by this animal's unpredictable and hyper-aggressive nature, which was why it was put into cryogenic sleep before the events of 2015. Up next, we will evaluate a dinosaur that was actually a refined genetically engineered dinosaur and an extremely violent creature. But first, what is our ranking table looking like? Because the Scorpius Rex didn't score as high in both relentlessness and intelligence due to its mental ailments, its overall average ranks it slightly lower than the powerful Spinosaurus. Upon bringing the Indominus Rex into the mix, however, we see that this animal's high score in all five categories places it above both the Scorpius and the Spinosaurus in terms of villainous nature. Don't confuse this with physical power. These are villainous characteristics, which also include physical attributes. But will the Indominus Rex keep its number one spot after we discuss the next two supervillains? Number four, the Indoraptor. This is a dinosaur probably famous for one thing, killing. 
or its acquired taste for it. But first, design. This creature was the next iteration of the Indominus line of hybrids, a more compact, fun-sized version of the Indominus Rex, but more deadly in the fact that this guy was a bioweapon commissioned to kill human beings. Its long, slender body with a quadrupedal posture allowed it to weave its way through tough terrains. Perfect senses including echolocation and razor-sharp weapons on its jaws and claws to spell doom on any unlucky victim. Oh, and bullet-resistant skin. Yeah, in terms of design, this guy reaches a near-perfect score. This animal would prove to get a bit obsessed with the concept of inflicting terror on its victims, the fact that this dinosaur kept chasing Maisie Lockwood around the house and obsessively stalking her says a lot about how messed up in the head this dinosaur really is. I mean, come on, look at this, man. This? This isn't hunting, this is child abuse. But we do have to admit that this guy was extremely intelligent as well, so much that it was able to leverage deceit, and it seemed to enjoy it. In addition to that, this animal showed signs of advanced problem-solving similar to what its predecessor possessed, and even expressive when it comes to its emotions. The only problem, however, is that all this raw brutality was given pause by this apparatus. That's right, this guy was also engineered to pay attention to this laser that was pointed at a victim. Once emitting an acoustic signal, this animal would then attack said target. A perfect example of how this animal's killer instincts were interrupted was in this scene. Before attacking Owen and Maisie, this Indoraptor had already determined that jumping here was not safe. But after Claire pulled up and pointed this laser at Owen, then the Indoraptor forgot all about it, ultimately putting it in a position where it would later fall and die. The Indoraptor had it all figured out, but the laser came in and erased all of that. It is because of this that we will have to penalize the Indoraptor when it comes to overall rankings, simply because this villain could be controlled. The Indoraptor had a similar backstory to the Indominus Rex living in captivity for most of its life except this guy seemed to go through a lot more mistreatment by his human captors, which then could explain why this particular dinosaur took his time to kill humans, as a form of revenge of some sort. We will now move on to the final and most robust dinosaur on this list. Number 5. The Giganotosaurus the Giga, according to the Jurassic lore, was one of the largest predators ever seen. The latest in this franchise's array of super predators, this animal measured over 50 feet in length, making it the second longest theropod in the Jurassic franchise. Its design was interesting in that it's actually completely different from the real-life Giganotosaurus in both size and appearance. This Giga featured an elegant set of osteoderms that decorated its back, beautiful striped body, and a majestic overall body build. It is the villainous attributes that we are going to have some trouble with. Unlike the other predators we have already covered, the Giga was actually portrayed as a dinosaur that would have behaved like any other predator. It wasn't haphazardly killing everything in sight like the Scorpius, it wasn't enjoying the act of killing like the Indoraptor, it didn't kill for sport like the Indominus, and most definitely didn't seek other T-Rexes to kill like the Spino. Though, to be fair, the ancient Giga was actually seen to kill a T-Rex in the prologue, though this was most likely a simple territorial dispute, a clear win for the Giga nonetheless. But it wasn't done out of spite. Upon meeting the crew, the Giga seemed to act like a normal predator. It sees food? Well, it's gonna go out to eat it. Except the movie did this Giga dirty. If this exact situation took place in the Lost World, for example, at least half of these people would have been dead. Well, you could argue that the Giga may have been just playing with his food, there are parts that would leave you with your head scratching. Why isn't this Giga simply biting down on an easy meal? What the heck is he waiting for? Or the fact that almost 99% of predators would have easily detected or at least smelled humans standing 10 feet away. It's stuff like this that puts its intelligence to question. We'd like to imagine that the Giganotosaurus in this movie was not always this stupid, giving us good evidence of intelligence upon its final confrontation with the T-Rex. But it's this type of scene where you need to cement yourself as a villain, a bad guy, someone or something that will go out of the way to kill anyone, whether they're the good or bad guy. And the Giganotosaurus simply failed to do that here. This magnificent creature was just another predator who showed up at the wrong place at the wrong times, and was ultimately killed doing territorial predator things. We don't have much of a backstory for this particular Giganotosaurus, but what we do know is that this film had implied some prehistoric beef or rivalry between the Rex and the Giga, explaining that a long time ago a Giganotosaurus miraculously spawned in the late Cretaceous and murked this T-Rex. So, how do all these dinosaurs fare in our villainous rankings? 
Because this dinosaur did not rack up enough points in the relentlessness, shrewdness, and cruelty categories, the Giganotosaurus will place fifth in our overall villainous rankings. This dinosaur had the potential to be a lot more, and it was equipped with everything it needed to cause calamity and destruction to this entire biome. But it didn't. A missed opportunity. Taking the fourth spot, we have a dinosaur whose mental ailments prevented it from fulfilling the atrocious acts it should have committed. A dinosaur that gets distracted too much to follow through its villainous plans, the Scorpius Rex. To its merit, however, this dinosaur's hyper-aggressive personality and brutal killstreaks allowed it to place higher than the Giganotosaurus. Had this dinosaur been in another show other than kid-friendly Camp Cretaceous, this dinosaur could have ranked higher on this list. Taking the third spot in the table is a dinosaur whose relentlessness to chase a small group of humans throughout an island made this a thing of nightmares. Its vengeful nature, its epic design, and T-Rex killing trait ranks it above the Scorpius and the Giganotosaurus, the Spinosaurus. Which leaves us with these two. Which of these will take the number one spot? Both the Indominus and Indoraptor showed exceptional levels of intelligence, a sleek and scary look, rich backstories, and bloodthirsty personalities. But because these are bioengineered, there is a trait that holds one of these dinosaurs back, and that is the Indoraptor. As explained earlier, the fact that this dinosaur is engineered to be able to be controlled by humans puts pause at whatever malevolent deed this dinosaur was about to commit, something that cannot be said for our number one, the Indominus Rex. Our uncontested winner successfully fills these categories, giving us a dinosaur that will be forever remembered as one of the most bloodthirsty killers of this entire franchise, and the one to shut down an entire park. If you want to see a more in-depth analysis on this topic, go check us out on the Beast Hub Podcast YouTube channel, a new channel featuring Joe from Goji Center, Jacob from Dangerville, and special guests such as James the Gaming Beaver discussing topics on dinosaurs, kaiju, and other crazy beasts. Thanks to Monster Legends for sponsoring this video, and don't forget to click on the links below to get the incredible The Walking Dead Monsters and free starter pack. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.